You know that I don't comment referee decision, okay? But the VR and in this season, I don't know why, but Premier, between Premier League and Champions League, and uh, we are not so lucky. We are not so lucky, okay? I think I think that uh, they, they create a big damage. Um, I'd like to see if this type of decision uh, you can take this type of decision with with a, a, a top team. A top team in a, an important game. Uh, yeah, uh, I'd like to see if uh, Deviar is so brave uh, to take this decision. I repeat, unfair decision because the ball is in front of Kane. Sorry, but I'm really upset because uh, sometimes you can accept uh, the situation. Sometimes I think that is not is not good because uh, I don't see honesty in this uh, in this type of of uh, situation and. Uh, when I don't see this, uh, I become uh, really, really upset. This decision uh, create, uh, create a big damage. I hope the club to understand this and then uh, to, in, a, in the right uh, situation also, to, to, to speak with the people that uh, they have to, to, to speak. Because um, otherwise, there is only the manager to speak. And uh, yeah, I think the club has to be strong. Has to be strong, and uh, because I repeat, this situation creates a big, big damage. Now, we 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 don't we don't know what happen uh, next week, and uh, if we go out, and then uh, and then uh, uh, I want to see. Yeah, so next week if they go out, he might let loose a bit more, but oh, he's yeah. let loose enough here, Simon, hasn't he? Is this genuine from Conte or is it distraction tactics? Because more booze at halftime from the Spurs fans, seemingly that's becoming a growing trend. He knows he's up against yeah. it with some of them. And just for the it's record, by the way is wrong. It, it was the right decision it was, yeah. not to allow the goal to stand. Look, I mean, I, mean, I, I believe... Antonio Conte is one of the elite managers in world football, and I believe that he will lead Tottenham somewhere close to the promised land. And by that I mean they'll win something with him. But that doesn't also mean that he isn't beyond the pale of scrutiny. It was a ridiculous outburst after the game to allude to the fact that there's collusion and corruption and uh, a, a focus on achieving something against Tottenham Hotspur is ridiculous. I understand the emotion. I understand the outburst to some extent. I don't condone it. We're in a territory where we're trying to get respect into the game. We're trying to get respect into officials. And these managers, we want them to be emotional. We want them to be invested. But there is a balance between being responsibly invested and irresponsibly unaccountable. And they're falling the wrong side of the line. These guys are on 12, 13 million pounds a year. They are able to control themselves. There is an element of unnecessary histrionics in the moment where he's... And, by the way, VAR doesn't help itself. It, you know, when we talk about GDS, goal detection system, sometimes the, the old moniker of goal disallowance system seems to be the focus because why does it take four, four minutes? Yeah, I agree. It doesn't help itself. I agree. It creates a temperature of increased agitation. But that does not give people an excuse to behave the way that Conti behaved yesterday. It's ridiculous. The reasons why his team need to go to Marseille and get a result is because in previous games, they've not been good enough. They've stunk the place out. They've given away games and goals in the last couple of minutes away to the same side um, when they should have been defending more robustly or at least put themselves in a way of winning games. Yeah. So if he sits there and has the outrageous perspective that if they don't qualify next week because of their own actions next week, someone else has got to be made accountable for it. It's preposterous. And then he starts calling upon the management of Tottenham Hotspur to be able to go out and support his position and to support him. He can't be... Well, shut your mouth then. No one's asking you to go to the ridiculous extremes that you've gone to. First and foremost, whether you like it or you don't like it, the goal was legitimately disallowed. Yeah. Second of all, and that's it's, key. Be it's because of people like you endlessly criticising referees that they bought VAR in, in the first place to be able to give referees a tool. Now what you're doing is you're using anything to deflect from the fact that ultimately your side's contribution over... And it's probably born out of a lot of frustration. They were crap against Man United. They weren't much better against Newcastle. And here's the third one, third cab off the rank. The exasperation of not being able to get an outcome on their first half performance they most certainly did not deserve. Yeah. Second half they were better. 
But surely to God, your team starts from the first whistle, not the 46th. So are these distraction tactics? As I say, he's using emotion as a justification well, I don't think that, I don't think he's intending to distract. I think he's exasperated and frustrated and under pressure. But the bottom line is, is they're third in the Premier League. Whatever we think of Tottenham's play at this moment in time, this man has been in this job for 11 months. It took Klopp three years, two and a half years, to build a very good Liverpool side. He's been there for 11 months. He's worked the Oracle. He will build a Tottenham side that will be something for everyone. But people have got to lay off the idea that somehow yeah. it's not entertaining but he does not get a pass no more than Jurgen Klopp got a pass for his conduct Simon, the other day when will managers be punished for attacking technology just like they do with human officials and this is the this is the this is the circle we got square do we want our officials in football to be treated with, no one gets a pass from making mistakes and there should be accountability they shouldn't just sail off into the sunset after making mistakes right the referees and the officials but this narrative that, or this rhetoric that's being built up by managers they can say what they want when they want they get slapped on the wrist, they get sent in the stands for five minutes while still picking the team, while still probably communicating with this with their number twos and their assistant managers and getting some piddly pop fine, which is about 10% mm. or 5% of their weekly take-home pay, yeah. is not the answer. What we, would you do if you're Daniel Levy this morning? Um, well, I think Daniel Levy will leave him alone because I think Daniel Levy understands that he's a combustible Italian that has a very high temperament, the same as it was last year when we sat on the touchline when he was away at Burnley and he was off on some ridiculous absurdic rant about what he wasn't going to be doing. What would and you say to him? And Daniel's response was, yeah, that's what he does. Yeah, yeah. What would I say? I'd say, be wiser. I, I like the emotion, I like the investment, but let's perhaps dial down the conspiracy theories. There's no third gunman on the grassy knoll. No one's looking out to do us. But Daniel might be as invested in the conversation as well because Daniel's got a big stadium to pay for and the last <laughs> thing he wants is to see a situation where they're knocked out of the Champions League. I want to hear from Tottenham fans this morning. Obviously, I, I personally would have liked the goal to have stood. Of course I would. I'd like Kane to have scored the winner and Tottenham to be looking good in this tournament. But it wasn't the case and the goal rightly was chalked off. That's the hard fact of the matter. But what about this outburst by Conte? Is it genuine from him or is it distraction tactics because as Simon says they have underachieved thus far in this Champions League